others like Rupa and Sanatan, and then others are uh, their associates. Now, Goswami word is derived from Sanskrit. Go means the senses, senses and the Swami is the master. master of the senses. So, Goswami is the one who has controlled the senses. That is called as. Now, do you think we need to control the senses? Yes. How many of you think? Why do we need to control the senses? Yes, bro. Oh, just be aware of our actions. Why do we need to control the senses, bro? Our senses make us do everything, uh, positive things also and negative things also. So if right. we don't control our senses, we are more often going to make uh, negative uh, things with, for which we are going to pay, have a reaction. Right. So one of the ways to control the senses is keep the phone off during the class. Mm. <laughs> so why should we control the senses? Because senses cause us to make sinful activity. You know, like we are here in front of Krishna, and we should focus on Krishna rather than on phone. That is humiliating Krishna, right? So senses leads us to the sinful activities. You know, so like that is why it is required to control the senses. Like. If you can't control the tongue, what will happen? You will talk something which is not required. So controlling the senses is very important for all of us. And as I said, if the horses are not controlled, what will happen? The cart will not run properly. You know, isn't it? The chariot will not run in a proper direction. And that is what Krishna is telling via Arjuna, why it is important for us to be the master of our senses and not the servant of our senses. Most of the time we are servants, you know, isn't it? Like what if you want to eat something, we go in the restaurant and eat. Right? And sometimes that food may have a some sort of contamination, you know, like, and then we may fall sick or like that. So it's harmful for us also, and it is harmful for our spiritual life also. So here Goswami is means these are six personalities who have by their life, living life example, have given us how to control the senses. You see this here person, this is a Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu was doing tapasya, austerity, standing, and he controlled his austerity. So he is a Goswami, he is Hiranyakashipu Goswami. Is he a Goswami? Yeah. You think he is a Goswami? Then why don't we worship him? Hiranyakashipu did tapasya, control the senses, and he gained all the power and pleased Brahma. So is Hiranyakashipu a Goswami? He no. did. He did that to gain some power mm -hmm. to uh, to use it materially. So and in that way, he is not a Goswami. He is a Goswami because he could control all his senses. But he used his uh, senses for some so, different you, so uh, wrong. Who is a Swami? You know, we have a Swami. I know every, uh, everybody has heard the word Swami, right? Swami. What does a Swami mean? What does Swami mean? Master. Right? Right? And who's master? Whose master is uh, the Bhakti Mark Swami comes? He is our master or he is his own master? Whose master is he? Our master. He is his own master of his yeah. senses. He is controlling his senses. That is why he is called as Swami. Swami Narayan. You know? There are Swami. You know? The word Swami is very commonly used in the scriptures. You know? Like many saints are also called Swami. Swami means the master. Right? Now Krishna is also called Swami, but he is the Swami of all of us. But Goswami means the master of the senses. You know. So Hiranyakashipu controlled his senses, but he is not Goswami. Because he could not control his senses in the end and he tried to harm his own son, kill his own son. If he is a Goswami, he will control the senses throughout. Not like one part and not all the time. You know. So a Goswami will be controlling his senses all the time. Hiranyakashipu was a servant of his senses. So for a while he did austerity, 
But with that austerity, he controlled, he got the power, and then his senses went out of the control. And what did he did? He even tried to offend Narsimha Dev by saying bad words to him. Right? So, even though temporarily we can artificially try to control the senses like Hiranyakashyapu, but we will not be successful unless those senses are surrendered to Krishna, then throughout the life it's possible. Like Maharaj Ambrish and Durvasa Muni, we saw the example last time, right? We talked about it. So, controlling the senses gives you power, strength, like Gandhari. You know, Gandhari, she controlled her senses. How did she control her sense? How did Gandhari got the strength? Put a blindfold. She put a blindfold around her eyes, okay? So, because her husband was blind and she wanted to be with her husband, and because of that, Gandhari got the strength. And what strength she got? And her eyes were emanating the power by which Duryodhana's entire body became the Bajra. body of the iron. That was the strength of the eyes of. But then, it is not for Krishna's service. So she could not control her sense and then she opened her eyes. So controlling the senses gives you a power, but using the senses for Krishna's service gives you a spiritual power, not the material power. So like Hiranyakashyapu controlled the senses, but not used it for the service of Krishna. So we are trying to get the strength which will last for longer time and not for a temporary time. So here are these six Goswamis and by their example and by their life we are going to learn how to control our senses. The horses, it is very important. Suppose you are giving exams as a student, it's very important that you stay focused, right? Or suppose you are doing a business or running your life. It is very important for all of us to stay focused and that focus is important and that is possible only by controlling the senses. So here are the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. This is the Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami and Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So all these six Goswamis of Vrindavan, they are telling us how to be master of the senses, how to be the master of your own life. You know, taking charge of your own life. Sometimes we um, we lose the control of our own life. And then Raghunath Bhatta and you know, Jeeva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they are giving this example of Hare Krishna. So, uh, out of these six Goswamis, uh, you see this person with the book in his hand, he is called Rupa Goswami. You know, when we recite the invocation prayer, we recite Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa That Rupa word is for Rupa Goswami Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Sa Padantitam So, the meaning of the prayer that is that when will, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami we need the mercy of this Goswami and we get the mercy by learning their teachings, you know. So we are going to talk about these two personalities today and learn from their life. Now they look like uh, beggars, you know, mendicants. They have just a piece of loin cloth. They don't have anything. But their life is very, very interesting to learn. So, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutani Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam So the meaning of that verse is when will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, will give me the shelter. So, so Rupa Goswami was the chief of all the six Goswamis. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, pastime or the story of the six personalities. And we are going to look into this uh, more detail. And he has written many of the scriptures. One of the books he has written is called as Nectar of instructions or Upadesha Amrita. So, two brothers, Rup and Sanatan. We are going into the year 1486, more than 520 years back. 
when Mughals were ruling all over India. And we are going to talk about these two personalities and how they have impacted the current life of everybody of us around today. So, during 1489 and 1564 they lived. They were born in Bengal, West Bengal, and in a Saraswat Brahmin family. And their father is Kumar Dev and their mother is Revati Devi. Now Revati Devi and Kumar Dev had total five sons and one daughter. So six children in total. Out of this, Sanatan Goswami, or whose name was Santosha before, Rupa, Sanatan, and their third brother, his name is Anupam, they were very, very bright and intelligent. And they were not only knowing the Bengali language, because they were born in Bengal, but at that time, they were very, very fluent in Arabian language, Farsi language, and Sanskrit. You know, young students, but they were fluent in all the languages. And uh, everybody, whosoever was there in the, in the town, they used to respect Rupa and Sanatan, Hare Krishna. So Rupa and Sanatan, these two brothers, were very well respected by everyone in the town, Hare Krishna. And uh, the reason of everybody respecting them was that both were very knowledgeable. In addition, they were very humble. Humility is a very, very important ornament. And uh, Roop and Sanatan were really, really humble. They used to respect everyone. And um, because of this, they are very popular in the whole city, you know, in that particular uh, town in the Bengal. And there was a king who was ruling at that time. Mughals were ruling India. So you can sit on a chair. There were Mughals were ruling, and the king who was ruling at that time, his name was Nawab Hussein Shah. Now, Mughals had this policy to rule over uh, everyone, and uh, the policy was that at that time, they never allowed anybody to do, uh, follow any other religion other than the, uh, their own religion to practice. You know? So they destroyed many temples. In public places, you can't do any, like, uh, deity worship or anything like that, you know. So you can't do kirtan or anything in the public places. So Nawab was really cruel, actually. However, um, to rule um, the kingdom, he needed the bright and intelligent people also, you know. So as he found out that Roop and Sanatan were really bright and intelligent and they were knowing multiple languages by which they can control the large number of population. So he threatened them that uh, both of you have to work for me. Now they were born in Brahmin family, you know, but they were forced by the king to work under him and he converted them into Islam actually. So he gave them a name, Dabir Khas and Sakar Malik. And the elder brother, the Sanatan, was appointed as the prime minister because they were really, really intelligent people. And Rupa, who was a younger brother, who was given as the position of home minister. And uh, under the rule of Nawab, they actually helped Nawab so nicely that uh, the kingdom of Nawab was flourishing day by day. And uh, he said that if you ever leave my service, then I will not spare any of the Hindu community living in that area. So they could not leave that job. You know, like that. So they were suppressed and they were forcefully asked to work for Nawab. Now, Nawab was cruel and they were helping him in his cruelty. You know, he was suppressing everyone, but then this as a prime minister, Sanatan had to obey the orders. You know? So he never liked to work for Nawab Hussain Shah. But then they were forced to work for them. In exchange for that, there is a place called Ramakeli. Ramakeli is a uh, in Bengal, and that's the place where Nawab gave them a big palace. 
and their salary was like thousands of dollars of gold coins every month big salary you know so they, he gave them enough money also and a big palace was given by nawab to these two brothers but now they were forcefully converted and they were asked to work for nawab and do all the sort of sinful activities uh, they were supplementing but they never wanted to do this you know so they thought that they are the most sinful people but they could not escape you know from the nawab's rule now nawab never allowed anybody to worship even their own like we have a radha bhagavat so sita ram lakshman hanuman we can do it here freely you know but they could not you know in in, in group you can't come together at that time 500 years back and do a kirtan program in your house and invite that was no no otherwise the nawab will send the soldiers and finish your program and finish you also like that so um now these two brothers roop and sanatan they in their palace which was given by nawab to them in their palace they built a vrindavan you know they built like it was a big palace you know so in their house they built a temple in which they had radha kund the sham kund they built the temple they built the forest vrindavan forest and then they externally they are showing that they are following the commands of nawab husain shah but internally their heart was for the service of krishna so they were always uh, chanting uh, maha mantra and they were reading the shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita but in the uh, hindrance you know they not in the public they could not do that so nawab was ruling and then he was suppressing everyone and most of the people who wanted to follow the scriptures or shrimad bhagavatam or bhagavad gita they came together in the house of sanatan and roop because they were the part of the kingdom you know so roop and sanatan used to invite the people in their house very secretly not in the open and then they used to close the doors and by closing the doors they used to do the kirtan you know, like that so um, similarly when shri prabhupad was uh, spreading krishna consciousness in china um, uh, about 50 years back china is a socialist country you know so there you cannot uh, at that time you cannot spread the bhagavad gita or teach the bhagavad gita to anyone in the public place otherwise the chinese rulers will put you behind the bars so then in the basements you know uh, of the people's houses in, even in russia also Russian rulers also never allowed anybody to spread religion or any uh, teachings in their country. So at that time in Russia, China, all the Bhagavad Gita spread uh, teaching were spread underground in somebody's house basement. They were teaching like that. In Russia, even the printing press will never print Bhagavad Gita for you. So people, devotees in Russia, they used to write Bhagavad Gita with their hands and then spread the message to each other. and uh, many of those devotees who wrote the bhagavad gita and spread the message Christine. they were jailed actually yes. and some of them were killed even so there are many of those incidences uh, in the recent past also so roop and sanatan as they built the gupta vrindavan they not only built the gupta vrindavan but in their house in the palace they provided the facility for people to come and discuss bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam which was not even available at that time you know so all these facilities were given by roop and sanatan to very close of his friends and they were very charitable this is another quality of the devotee they were charitable to everyone to brahmins vaishnavas to poor sikh people and that is there by their example they proved that a devotee or a bhakta is very charitable not only to vaishnavas or brahmanas but to everyone the poor the sick the needy people they helped everyone like that so that's how roop and sanatan were very popular you know and nawab used them to rule all over now as they were um always remembering krishna they always had a desire to see lord chaitanya lord chaitanya mahaprabhu also appeared at the same time in bengal in the navadeep dham mayapur and chaitanya mahaprabhu at the same time you know tukaram uh, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mirabai, all the Bhakti movement, if you have heard the word Bhakti movement, at that time, 500 years back. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa and Sanatana knew that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is nothing but incarnation of Krishna in the form of a devotee. So Rupa and Sanatana always wanted to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but they could never ever leave the kingdom because king was always watching them that these two people should not leave you know? because the king uh, the nawab was enjoying you know and for his enjoyment somebody has to look after the kingdom right so he was doing that so he wrote many letters in private to chaitanya mahaprabhu that we want to come and see you can you please give us the opportunity to? but then chaitanya mahaprabhu never replied to them and they were really disappointed that we want to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not willing to see. So they thought that we are very sinful, we are working for Nawab, so he will never ever. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a plan. He was, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived in Jagannath Puri, which was in Bengal. So from Jagannath Puri to, Jagannath Puri is in Orissa, right? Yes. Sorry about that. Orissa. So Jagannath Puri, after Sanyas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from Bengal moved to Jagannath Puri. And from Jagannath Puri, he was traveling to Vrindavan. Right? So Orissa to Vrindavan, how far is that distance? Quite a big distance, you know, at least uh, 1500, 2000 kilometers. No, no, no. No? Vrindavan and uh, Jagannath Puri? No, no, no. Maybe 1000, 1000. 1000 at least, right? Now, 1,000 kilometer in the age 500 years back, then there is no plane, no car, no train. It's a big distance, you know. And they used to travel by walking, actually. You know? And they never had a so wonderful shoes like what he 